So the most important part of any EV conversion is really the battery. The Model 3 battery is one of the best quality batteries you can get in an EV. Now one of the main reasons that I got the dual motor variant of the Model 3 is because it's got the bigger 75 kilowatt hour battery. Now as you can see, like pretty much all modern EV batteries, the Model 3 battery uh, sits under the floor uh, and takes up pretty much the whole width of the car. So I need to be able to fit this battery somehow into the Land Rover. Ideally I'd leave the battery packaged in its original casing and mount it in the Land Rover somehow. Now believe it or not the Land Rover was never really designed to fit a battery this sort of size. There's not enough room between the chassis rails, there's not enough room uh, above the chassis rails and below the body. So I'm going to have to reconfigure the size of the battery uh, to be able to fit it. Part of the brilliance of the Model 3 is that it incorporates all the high voltage componentry into the battery box in a separate sort of chamber that sits uh, above the battery and comes up under the rear seat. Uh, they call this the penthouse. So first task in disassembling the battery is to first disassemble the penthouse. So before we dive into a high voltage sort of area, we'll just do a quick test to make sure the contactors are okay and they're open, meaning that there's no high voltage in places where there shouldn't be. So first test is to put your multimeter on voltage and if it's under 10 volts it's passed, that's zero volts. Then you measure between each post and ground. I'm gonna use the 12 volt battery ground. So that's 170 millivolts, so that's under 10 volts, so that's a pass. That one's also 150 millivolts, so that's a pass. Right, so we're now ready to take the cover off the penthouse. Right, so this is a good time to talk about high voltage. So the most important thing to be aware of is where the high voltage points are. Now, because the contactors are both open, and yeah, we've just checked that, we know that none of the main bus bars or the components will have any high voltage on them. On the far right here, we've got the most negative post of the battery under a little insulative cover, and on the left is the most positive terminal. So there's around about a 350 volt potential between these two points. So you definitely don't want to touch these two terminals at the same time. There's also the middle of the battery, which is connected together with the pyro fuse. So even though it's half the voltage, 175 volts, you still don't want to touch the middle part of this battery to either the positive or negative posts. So we can actually eliminate that 350 volt potential by just removing the pyro fuse in the middle here. Next step is removing this high voltage controller. I uh, just need to unclip all the connectors. Just a little push thing to push down and then pull. I mean, I don't know how the hell you would do this with high voltage gloves on. So that lifts up and then it unclips it and then put it back and out it comes. It's off. Okay, then we need to unclip these wires. Put this up and just pull. Next thing we'll do is uh, disconnect the coolant lines from the PCS. It's a good idea to use a rag to catch any stray coolant. Oh God. These coolant lines have legs that need to be spread apart uh, before pulling up to release the pipe. Um, it's come far enough now to clear the barbs. Low voltage 
battery connector and we just connect these ones just a simple push down pull this one pull the locking tab then it'll allow you to push the thing wiggle and pull out a little thing that you push in the PCS is a combination of things it not only charges the high voltage battery but it also charges the low voltage battery the 12 volt battery and it actually uses the 12 volt battery to um, pre-charge the circuitry to bring it up to high voltage That's the battery side. This is the people side. Remove the protective cover. Just need to remove the bolts that attach this contactor to the penthouse. Then you just lift this out. And then I'm just going to put the nut. Here. Okay, positive contact aside. Put the cover off the positive terminal. There's a little clip hidden under in there, you can actually see it down in there, and then there's a little clip here, wiggle it out, move these two, these are the negative and positive connectors to here, and same with these two negative and positive connectors, oh, they're beefy, the size of those buttons. There's a little connector under here that we need to remove. It's a little white tab that you've got to slide backwards. So you can push the clip to release it. So that tab, got to slide backwards, then it'll allow you to push it to release it. Okay. There's a little clip there that goes into a barb in the middle here. And one nut. Then we need to take off these ones. Move the DC input. And we can just lift this baby out. Hopefully jubbly. The AC input. they put it together in I'm just going to leave that like that. That's perfect. The centre battery modules. Here I'm just removing the battery management system or BMS uh, daisy chain connectors. These sort of link all the uh, battery management systems for the each battery module together and back to the main high voltage controller. Okay this is the the front motor outlet. This will only be on the long range battery pack, not the twin motor battery pack. Okay, rear motor connector. Connector for the uh, heater and air conditioner. And 
take out the seal. Now to release the outer portion of the high voltage output, uh, there's six little spring clips that need to be pushed in to release them. Then the spring clip assembly needs to be released from the inner post by just bending back the little spring clips. It's all a little bit fiddly. You need to sort of pull down as you're uh, releasing them. Um, just be patient and try not to break anything. The outer portion for the HVAC system just has four little tabs that need to be released. Then just a clip on each side of the tab bracket. At this point, the outer frame of the penthouse starts getting in the way, so it's probably a good idea to take this off now. This is both glued and welded on, so I need to go around and um, grind and cold chisel, or in my case, cold screwdriver, uh, the weld free, uh, and then using a uh, scraper, uh, release all the polyurethane. Just need to take care around the back of the penthouse because the components are hard up against the case here and you don't want to damage anything. Before lifting it off, I made sure I went around the back of the case to just try and release all the polyurethane that's everywhere around here. With this removed, you can see how much easier it is to get at all the bus barring and all the other final components. Then you won't have the same problems that I did in the frame getting in the way of the further disassembly. Other than the main pyro fuse, these are the only other three conventional type fuses you'll find in a Model 3. I feel like these tabs aren't really designed to be removed. It was at this point that I realised that there wasn't a lot more I could do with the penthouse frame still attached. Without moving the penthouse frame, it's literally impossible to remove this whole bus bar assembly. If you're wanting to reuse the penthouse base, you'll have to take the main battery cover off first before uh, breaking the polyurethane seal. Right, so at this point I need to stop playing around with this penthouse and start getting into the battery modules.